Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today I just wanted to make a quick update video for my Game Engine Post Processing Filters add-on, as you can see here. So if you haven't already, there's a download link in the description below for version 1.4 with these two new filters. Uh, so if you haven't already, feel free to download it and I'll just cover how to use them in this video. So we're going to go ahead and open up a new file here. And then basically, if you have that add-on already enabled, what will happen is even in Cycles or Blender Render, you'll have a section down here that will say Select Blender Game Renderer to use the add-on. Now, if you aren't actually using the game engine and you just want to be using Blender for cycles and stuff, you can just minimize it here and you won't see any sort of mess. However, if you aren't sure how to really use this, it can be quite helpful just basically telling you what to do. So we're going to go ahead and follow the instructions here, change it to Blender Game Renderer. Then we're going to scroll all the way down and you'll notice we have a new instruction to select GOSL Shading on the add-on. So if we go up to shading here, you can choose GOSL, or you can press N on the keyboard, bring up this menu, and change it to GOSL. So we'll select that, we'll scroll down, and then to add or remove filters, we need to select a camera, so go ahead, select this one, and now we're able to add and remove filters. Now one thing you do have to keep a note of is down here you have to be in texture mode to make it look nice. So some of the 2D filters will still work in solid view and wireframe, like depth of field and stuff. However, again, to see them working properly, you want to be in texture mode. Now one more thing you'll notice when we do add filters, they've been nicely spaced out, so you don't just have one really long list. You now have two columns to choose from, and they are alphabetically sorted as well. So what we're going to do here is add the new filter here called HDR. Basically what this does is, as you can read here in the description, adjust the light levels to suit the environment. So basically what that means is if you get really dark pixels like in here, it will brighten up the whole image so it looks nice. So we're going to go ahead and click add and then that will add a filter and a script. So we're going to go into full view here and press play and you'll notice we sort of get a white flash at the start. If you don't like that flash, we can turn the average L here to 1 and it will start immediately at normal. Now this HDR amount is basically how bright the image gets, so up to you how much you want to change that. So now with this filter enabled, I can go up to this palm tree here and I can look at the bottom where the dark pixels are and it will immediately make the whole image brighter. So basically in a nutshell, it will darken bright spaces and it will lighten the dark ones. Now the next filter I've added is Motion Blur. So a couple of tutorials ago I did actually make a tutorial on how to add Motion Blur and it was sort of like a hack using Radial Blur and then just differing the amount depending on how much a player turns. However this doesn't really work so well uh, for up and down movement and it didn't really work for camera movement in general. It only worked if you turn side to side. So from my menu here if I go ahead and select Motion Blur then we can click Add Filter and you can see we get a warning here to change the blur C distance property on the M blur empty. So you can just go up to your outliner here and find M blur empty, this one here. Uh, usually it will just add it at the very center of your scene and it should look something like this. So what we're going to do here is change this first property and this will determine how much blur you have. So maybe if we turn it up to 0.75, this should be way too much blur. Yep, you'll notice as we move around there's a ridiculous amount of blur, but you can see it's working properly. So I tend to stick with the value uh, 0.15, as that seems to work pretty well, but again that might still be a bit much, so maybe 0.1. Again, up to you how much you want to change it. All these values here are just basically passing along uh, rotation values to the 2D filter, so don't worry about these. If you do want to change anything further, you can go into the script here, change the samples so it runs faster or runs slower, it looks better. Then you can also change the strength. Uh, float distance is what you're changing over here. And then there's a couple other things you can add and remove if you like. So if you've downloaded the add-on and you want to install it, all you have to do is go to File, User Preferences, go under Add-ons, and then Install from File. And now what you need to do is go into your Downloads or whatever, find the folder, and then you can go ahead and install it. Once you've installed it, under the game engine here, you should get an option for post-processing filters. And then 
just tick that box and save user settings and that means it will always load up when you open up Blender. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed the update for the add-on so you can do lots of awesome stuff with it. If you do find any bugs or anything like that be sure to leave a comment down below, I'll check them regularly. Uh, so I can release further updates to patch the bugs if there is any. But apart from that, hope you enjoyed the video, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.